I know you guys in the algorithm absolutely love Jury's feet, and I don't blame you, but I want to quickly talk about the other new announcement for Street Fighter 6, Kimberly. Kimberly is a ninja who has for some reason replaced Guy in the game of a Metro City, and as is Street Fighter 6's mantra when it comes to design, she's buffed a very great deal when it comes to Guy's base moveset. To understand Guy in short term, he's sort of like a more martial art focused Shoto. He has no projectile, his tatsu is more of a combo ender like Kage or Ken, and to dodge projectiles he instead has an EX elbow to duck under them, similar to characters like Laura. And his main feature as a mix up tool is his command dash. The light version hits the brakes, the medium version is a low hitting slide kick, while the heavy hits overhead. Guy already got an improved version in Street Fighter V with Zeku, a stance character who can quickly swap between a young variant who has Guy like moves and an old variant who's a powerful zoner. Unfortunately old Zeku has been done away with, but to make up for it, since Guy's main issue is having little to no capability full screen, Kimberly has a lot more ways to move around the screen than Guy or Zeku ever had. And inspired by Zeku's V skill, she can even place firecracker bombs after storing them with the move where she shakes up spray paint cans, and then she can use them to pressure zoners or set up punishing combos. Seemingly, she can also spread these spray cans on a dashing teleport in order to dodge projectiles and quickly gain space on the opponent, which is a way more important tool than it might at first seem. Besides just dodging projectiles, even the swift dash forward is incredible. Justin Wong recently described Drive Rush as your lifeblood when you're playing Street Fighter 6, and Kimberly is looking especially strong as she not only has this teleport to act as a Drive Rush without using her Drive Gauge, but seemingly she also has some form of Hop Kick, similar to a Low Hop in KOF. And on top of this she's also gained a Dive Kick, which we definitely haven't even seen the start of in terms of its potential. For a very short roundup of what makes this sort of thing strong, Demon Flips are immensely strong in Street Fighter. Demon Flips are command moves that jump you arcing into the air, normally with the option of a low, a throw, or a high attack. Guy, Kimberly, and Zeku all have a slightly worse Demon Flip that only ends in either a high elbow chop or a throw, so two options instead of three. But even more notable than Demon Flips are rare circumstances that characters get air momentum altering moves in Street Fighter. Anti-airing is important in every game, but in Street Fighter since there's no air dash, players typically overtrain their instinct to DP in response to jumps. And lastly, these moves can often either jump right over a DP or hit much faster than a DP that's timed the exact same can start up. Air momentum altering moves are exceedingly rare in Street Fighter and have traditionally been extremely strong, often rocketing characters up tier lists with the likes of Season 4 Seth or Street Fighter 4 Yun and Rufus being close to broken as a result of these very moves. Street Fighter V has very few of these moves as a result of this balance issue, but the few that remain in the game are problematic and in many circumstances either difficult to punish or entirely unanswerable. But Street Fighter VI seems very happy to add a lot of these. Not only did we see Jury do a new air tatsu, which used to be reserved specifically for the Shotos, but Luke has also been seen using some sort of aerial uppercut that again just never would have been allowed to fly in past entries. Pardon the pun. While this not only adds to the immensely overwhelming strength of Kimberly as a character, I think it speaks to Street Fighter VI's willingness to design her character's interface with the game and its mechanics on a character to character basis, rather than the failing in many modern games, including Street Fighter V, to make many characters overwhelmingly rely on universal systems to move around the screen and catch punishes or continue combos. To drive this point home, Kimberly features the very first ground bounce that we've seen in Street Fighter VI. There are a couple exceedingly rare wall bounces in 5, but not only do we see Kimberly do a wall bounce combo like it's nothing, but her aerial command grab can be meter burn to allow you to follow up with a combo afterwards. Ground bounces are very much uncommon in fighting games nowadays, with the main exceptions being Tekken 7, which is nearly 10 years old at this point, and Labcoat 21, who was privileged enough at time of release to actually receive a tournament ban before receiving sweeping nerfs, due to how rule breaking this sort of combo extension often is. I love this sort of character driven, mechanically deep gameplay and how it massively changes character matchups and allows for huge differences in playstyles between individual characters across different players. And I think if it's something you'd like to see well done or explore in theory, I recommend messing around in Blaze Blue's Central Fiction. Easily my favourite fighting game and in it every single character has unique movement mechanics which can cover anything from grappling hooks to lock on targeting and magnetism. Because of things like this, I think this trailer is a huge win not just for fighting game elitists and hardcores, but the gaming public in general. Trusting players to find the fun and expression, and not insulting the public's intelligence by making every character play the same, is something we should all celebrate and look forward to. So again, this trailer is just another way I can say I'm willing to put my faith in Street Fighter 6 and it could easily wind up being a top 3 or number 1 fighting game for me on its release next year. That's going to be all for this video, but until next time, stay safe.